Welcome back to the Printicast RPG project on RPG Maker VX Ace. As you can see, I've been, whoops, kind of moved my screen a little bit here. I've been playing around with the default kits to try to make things look a little this guy like It's just place value stuff. We'll be fixing all this later, but at least it gives you some visual in the meantime. But today we're going to do something different than actually working largely with RPG Maker at all. We're going to start working with the import, export, and the resource manager, which is right up in here. And uh, we're going to work on the faces, because the faces, as you might remember, are the little graphics here that you can not only see as a representation of your character, but it is also the uh, something that you can use for your talking bits and the portraits that, like we saw in the other day, in the last chapter. So this time we're going to first export. I know this seems like a weird thing to do, but this is kind of important. I've already got ourselves a file made up for this, so it already knows where it's going. And we're going to bring that over here. And there's multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to do show you the easiest way for me to do it. I'm going to open up MS Paint, which obviously comes with Windows. Uh, you're going to have various versions of this. But I'm going to zoom in here, and you notice it's just a little under 100 pixels. I already know what the, the size is, but this is a good way to do this on multiple reasons. So let's turn this on pixels, 96 by 96, and we were right on the money. I'll undo it here and you can tell that it's right on those edges. So that's how much room we have to work with. I'm pretty sure that this is a scalable thing in VX Ace, which is not something that used to be that way in the older versions, but in here we've got that. So I am going to go ahead and save this, and I'm going to save it as just plain actor A for the moment. Yes, uh, transparency loss. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Well, we're actually going to go into that now. We're going to go in here. And yeah, that was kind of a mistake to do it that way. Because I'll have to fix it in here. But this this kills a lot of birds with a lot of stones by showing you this. This is paint.net. This is a free program you can get online. And it's very much like a Photoshop Lite. Absolutely, completely useful for all of this type of work that I do with the art. This is not the picture we're going to use, obviously. We're going to need a new one. And it just so happens I have a picture of a printy. This one right here. And uh, we're going to use that as a test place for the current version of our test printy. If I'm making any sense. So uh, we've already got this open, so I'm going to drag and drop. Now I'm going to open this in a new instead of adding a layer because I want to do some special stuff with this. So I'm going to. Control A to select the whole thing. I'm going to copy. You can copy in multiple ways, but I, I prefer shortcut keys. Makes things smoother. And I'm going to paste. And it's going to ask me if I want to expand the canvas, but I don't. I'm going to keep it the same size so it fits into this little block. And now we take our little adjustments here. And I'm going to fit it so that that pretty face is right in the middle. Now there's probably some way of locking it so it doesn't lose its perspective so that uh, it doesn't stretch it too far left or right or up or down, because that can be an issue. But I pretty much know what looks decent, and that looks decent, right? The beak's not all on there, but that's okay. That that works pretty good, I think. So uh, we're going to go ahead and click off of that. So now he's permanently in place there. We can get it back if we need to, but I don't believe that we will. Now, to put it back inside, we just need to import it after we've saved, but there's a little more I want to do first. Those transparencies? Those are kind of nice. So we're going to take our wand right here, and we're going to click. Now, all of that that you're seeing in the dots is being selected at the moment, so we want our tolerance to be a little lower than that, and it's automatically applied. So we'll slide this a little bit, but you'll notice that we can't quite get all of these little bumps but without taking out our nose so we definitely don't want to do that so we'll leave it right there and we're going to hit the delete and we're going to do it here and do the same thing delete now we got our transparencies back however if we stopped right here a lot of pictures I mean we've already lost a lot of resolution by shrinking him and the resolution is giving us this jaggy effect that you're seeing so there's some loss of color, loss of definition and stuff, and that's why we're not going to be using this as our final product. What it is going to be important if you do use this kind of technique is if you put this on a different screen, some of this is going to show up very strangely, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to make a new layer, and uh, I'm going to get some paint here. I'll drag this over here so you can see what I'm doing. 
I'm going to grab a random color that I know is not on this, and I'm going to paint. Oh no, I deleted my picture. No, no, it's on the layer over here. So I'm going to move this layer down, and now you see what I mean. See all these little white dots? Those are really going to show up bad. Now I don't exactly like the eraser on here because I cannot find an eraser that is pixel perfect, like dropping it all the way down to, to uh, you know, click in that and it's gone. Unless it doesn't work that way. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer anyway. So I generally have to move this up a little bit and uh, bring that back and just kind of color them down. And boy, there's some lag going on here. I don't think it likes me using this. Okay, so we're going to uh, attempt this again. Now it's just, we're losing even more of our definition, which is not exactly a good thing, but it's a heck of a lot better than dealing with those little white dots. Alternately, you could actually go in and uh, take your color picker here and say take that color right there and fill in these little, oops, fill in dots like that, and that's, that's an alternative of working with it too. But we're in a hurry, so I'm just going to continue using the... Hmm, is that on that? Oh, it is! Oh my! Okay. I, I flubbed up in more than one way. But we're just going to continue doing this. I am really rushing it. I normally take a lot more time to fix this, but... This is temporary. This is just temporary. So, uh, I think this will do. It's not perfect, but you're not going to have any more instances of those little white specks anymore. There might be an issue right in here that doesn't look quite right, but uh, yeah, make sure your layer's off, or heck, even delete it. Just make sure you don't delete that. And uh, save. I'm going to save it directly on top of the old picture. Actor A over here is going to be the pretty. So what we need now is to go back in here, go to our resource, go to import, and you'll see all our pictures here, and Actor A. There you go. I would actually prefer to rename this, like, Test Printy, because that's what it's going to be for. But now he's in our system. And we can go down to here, click on this, go to Actor A, and there you go. And, uh, that was <laughs> the rushed way to do this. But, uh, hey, we're getting, we're getting somewhere. We're also not taking this exactly in the order that we should be taking things, so uh, do not use this as a step-by-step -step sort of tutorial. That is the worst way to look at this particular project. But uh, until next time, dudes.